Hi, welcome to Geometry. This is section 5.1, mid-segments of triangles. A mid-segment is the segment connecting the midpoints of two sides of a triangle. This is called the mid-segment of the triangle. So, here, there are midpoints. See, it cuts this, seg this side of a triangle in half. It's two congruent pieces. Another midpoint cuts this side into two congruent pieces, and another midpoint cuts this third side into two congruent pieces. So the lines that connect these midpoints are called mid-segments. We did a discovery activity today in class on mid-segments of triangles. Our objective in this lesson is to use properties of mid-segments to solve problems. It's essential to your understanding that there are two special relationships between a mid-segment of a triangle and the third side of the triangle. So two special relationships. We're going to investigate those here in this lesson. One relationship is that the mid-segment, so let's talk about DF in this picture. DF is parallel to AC and DF is equal to half of AC, or AC is two times DF, if you can see the congruent symbols. And the same thing is true when we talk about EF. EF is parallel to BA, meaning they have the same slope in a coordinate plane, they'll never cross, and all those things you know about parallel lines cut by transversals, true. And EF is half of BA. If BA is 2, tick marks, EF is 1. EF is congruent to 1 half of BA. And then the same is true for the third mid-segment, DE is parallel to BC and it's equal to half of the length of BC. So if F is the midpoint of BC, cuts it into two congruent pieces, and DE, the mid-segment, is equal to one-half of BC, so either BF or CF. And these are the two special relationships we're going to discuss between a mid-segment of a triangle and the third side of the triangle. That being said, here's the theorem. Theorem 5.1, triangle mid-segment theorem. If a segment joins the midpoints of two sides of a triangle, then the segment is parallel to the third side and is half as long. So if D is the midpoint of CA, so D is the midpoint of CA, that means it cuts it into two congruent pieces, and E is the midpoint of CB, that means it cuts it into two congruent pieces, then this means that DE is parallel to AB. So parallel, you know that means that they'll never cross, means that their corresponding angles are congruent, right? And DE is half the length of AB. So for instance, if AB equals 10, then DE would be half of 10, it would be 5. So that's the triangle mid-segment theorem. The mid-segment of a triangle is parallel to the third side, so the side that it does not intersect. See how D and E intersect the other two sides? And it's half the length of that third side. So what are three pairs of parallel segments in triangle DEF? So we have this triangle DEF. Let's talk about the three pairs. RS and ST and TR are mid-segments of triangle DEF. So by the triangle mid-segment theorem, RS is parallel to DF. They are parallel to 
through, and ST is parallel to ED by the mid-segment theorem. And then finally, TR would be parallel to EF. So they are parallel. Remember, that's what that arrow indicates. Therefore, they're never going to cross. And so from that, we know a whole bunch of things about these angles because you know that parallel lines cut by a transversal, corresponding angles are congruent. These ones are really going to come into play in this chapter when we're talking about triangles and triangles within triangles and shapes within shapes. So let's see if you understand. In triangle XYZ, A is the midpoint of XY, B is the midpoint of YZ, and C is the midpoint of XC. What are three pairs of parallel segments? Well, take a minute and draw a triangle XYZ with these different segments. See if you can figure it out. Pause the video. So hopefully you've drawn triangle XYZ. If A is the midpoint of XY, so that means A is the point that marks the middle of XY, and B is the middle of YZ, it's the midpoint of YZ, and C is the midpoint of XZ, that means it cuts XZ into two congruent parts. Which of the three pairs are parallel segments? Well, let's take a look at that. That would mean that AC AB and BC are all mid-segments. Therefore, we would have three pairs of parallel segments. We would have this first pair, AC to YZ. So AC would be parallel to YZ. Then we would have another pair, we would have AB, which would be parallel to XZ. AB would be parallel to XZ. And then finally, we would have this third pair. Segment CB would be parallel to segment XY. Segment CB would be parallel to segment XY. The mid-segment is parallel to the side that it does not intersect, to the third side. Let's take a look at this second problem. What's the measure of angle VUO in the figure at the right? Explain your reasoning. So VUO, that's this angle here. We want to know what's the measure of that angle. Well, if UV is the mid-segment, and it clearly is because U and V are midpoints of these sides. U cuts NO into two congruent pieces, and V cuts MO into two congruent pieces. Therefore, UV and NM are parallel and because they are parallel, parallel lines cut by a transversal, NO, have corresponding angles that are congruent. So the measure of angle VUO would be equal to the measure of angle MNO, which is 65 degrees, because they're corresponding angles. If those lines are parallel, then their corresponding angles are congruent. Because parallel lines cut by a transversal have corresponding angles that are congruent. So we knew that the mid-segment was parallel to the side that it does not intersect. But we also know that the mid-segment is half the length of the side that it does not intersect, the side that it's parallel to. So let's use that now. In triangle QRS, T, U, and B are midpoints. T, U, and B are midpoints. And therefore, these are mid-segments. So what are the lengths of T, U, 
UB and QR. Let's find them out. Well, you know that mid segments are half the length of the side that they do not intersect. So let's first take a look at this segment, TU. TU is parallel to this side, SR. So TU would equal one half of SR. FR is, SR is two times TU. So if F, SR is 40, then TU will equal one half of 40. So TU is going to be 20. The mid-segment is half the length of the side that it's parallel to. Now let's take a look at segment UB. UB is parallel to QS. So UB is going to be equal to half the length of QS. So UB will equal half of the length of QS is here, 50. So UB will equal 25. Finally, let's talk about this side, QR. QR and TB are related. TB is parallel to QR. Therefore, TB is one half of QR. TB is equal to one half of QR. Well, we don't know the measure of QR, but we know that TB is 30. So 30 is equal to one half of QR. How do we divide by a fraction? You multiply by the reciprocal. So it would be times 2 over 1. So 60 is equal to QR. QR would equal 60 and TB is half of 60. It's 30. Now you try this one. In the figure at the right, AD is equal to 6. DE is equal to 7.5. What are the lengths of DC, AC, EF, and AB? See if you can figure it out. Pause the video. See if you've got it. So let's take a look. If AD is equal to 6, and AD and DC are congruent, then DC is equal to 6. Also, the whole thing, AC, is those two pieces put together, so AC would be 12. It's the whole thing. So it's 12. EF, that's the mid-segment that's parallel to AC. So EF, would be congruent to one half of AC, so six. EF is six. And then we have AB. Well, let's talk about AB. DE is one half of AB. So DE is congruent to a half of AB. So that means that half of AB is 7.5, just like DE. The other half of AB would also be 7.5. So the whole length of AB would be two 7.5s, 15. Because DE is half of AB. Therefore, each half of AB is 7.5. Last thing we're going to talk about in this lesson is using the mid-segments of a triangle in a real-life application. So an environmental scientist, a geologist wants to determine the distance AB across a sinkhole. Choosing a point E outside the sinkhole, she finds the distance A to E and B to E, thus forming a triangle. 
she locates the midpoints C by cutting AE in half and D by cutting AB into two equal parts. She measures CD, the distance across. Well, this distance connects two midpoints of this triangle, and therefore, CD is the mid-segment of this triangle, AEB. So if CD is 46 feet, what's the distance across the sinkhole? Take a minute, see if you can figure it out. So CD is equal to one half of AB. Or another way to look at this is CD is equal to AB cut in half divided by two. If CD is 46, and that's AB cut in half, then we would multiply by two. So AB, the distance across the sinkhole, is going to be what? 92 feet. So this geologist used the idea of mid-segments of a triangle by identifying two points across the width of this sinkhole, and then identifying a third point outside of the sinkhole, E, to make a triangle. Using the mid-segment theorem, she cut the lengths of each of these segments in half and used the mid-segment theorem to know, well, that if these were the two midpoints and the distance between them was 46 feet, then AB that's parallel to them would be twice as long, 92 feet, and therefore she could use this in a real life application to find the distance across the sinkhole is 92 feet. Please make sure you write down any questions that you may have that we can talk about tomorrow in class.